This video reviews the fitting of scleral lenses with your Medmont E300 corneal topographer. Start by capturing a composite eye so you're able to image 100% of the visible iris with the peripheral surface being so critical when we're able to measure the peripheral corneal angle that can be used to predict the anterior chamber depth going well out onto the sclera. Studies at Pacific University show us that the peripheral corneal angle can be used as prediction of the angle well past the limbal borders to a diameter across the eye surface of approximately 20 millimeters. So the better information that we have on the peripheral cornea, the more accurate your Medmont will be able to predict the anterior chamber depth required for your scleral lens. In this case, if we measure the diameter of capture on this particular patient, we're able to measure almost 12.5 millimeters across the surface of the eye. So a very large capture area. Anything between 10 and beyond gives us a very good understanding of the anterior chamber depth as a prediction of the depth well past our measured area. Next, after selecting our composite map, we can go to data and look at our attributes. And this user has added a number of attributes, the corneal angle at five millimeters out at zero degrees. So that's one millimeter, two millimeters, three, four, five millimeters out. What is the angle of the peripheral cornea at zero degrees and then what is the angle of the peripheral cornea at five millimeters distance at 180 degrees one millimeter two three four five these angles can be used as a prediction of changes you may need with your scleral lenses for instance corneal angles greater than 35 degrees typically mean that we will need higher limbal vault with our scleral lenses, higher than what's typically in the standard scleral set. When the peripheral corneal angle is lower than 35 degrees, that's typically where the limbal vault is easily achieved with the standard scleral diagnostic lens. However, with such a flat angle to the surface, that's often when scleral lenses impinge and we may need flatter peripheral curve systems in our scleral lenses. So angles greater than 35 degrees, typically we need more limbal vault with our standard lenses. Less likely to have impingement in the landing. However, when you have angles lower than 35 degrees, that's typically where we will have good limbal clearance. However, having impingement of the edge is more likely. Now we can use a estimated height algorithm within your Medmont attributes to calculate the sagittal depth of lens that we may require to the diameter our lens is measured. For instance, if our scleral lens is measured to a diameter of 15 millimeters, the Medmont can come up with a predicted sagittal depth, in this case, 4,323 microns. If our scleral lens has a larger diameter and a larger cord of bearing that it's measured over, then enter that value, that cord of bearing, in this case, it might be 17 millimeters, and the estimated height across the 0 and 180 meridian is 5,571. So set the cord of measure for your particular scleral lens over which its sagittal depth is measured. Then use the Medmon software to predict the sagittal height of lens that you need. Take this estimated height, add the apical clearance desired by your particular scleral lens, and that tells you the sagittal depth of lens you should pull from your diagnostic set. 